Hi everyone, I'm Yaniv, Head of Product Management for the Threat Prevention Area at Checkpoint. And when saying threat prevention, I mean the area where we design and add new security capabilities to prevent zero days and unknown threats, which not surprisingly is what I wanted to talk with you about today. In this session, I will show you how we successfully able to catch up with the ever-growing threat landscape and the huge number of zero-day samples we see on daily basis in Threat Cloud. Now, each part of the session will not only describe the problem and explain technically how we do things, but will also provide actual proof points from Threat Cloud findings, customers, analysts, reports, and other sources, because what we do works. Ready to get started? Let's go. When the production team of the CPX event asked me to send them my session name for the preview materials, I wanted to truly capture the threat prevention guidelines we set to ourselves when we come to design new security capabilities. So I decided to call it the next, next gen of AI and threat prevention. Why? Because this year, we introduced several new AI-based threat prevention capabilities, which really took us to the next phase of the next gen. Thus, the next next gen name. And what does it mean? Three key points. First and foremost is the prevention first approach. Anything that we do should prevent the attack at its earliest stage possible. I will show you how it is, it is applied in the coming slide. Second is the AI based technology, because in most cases to prevent a zero day vector in real time and with the highest accuracy, you will likely need an AI based engine and probably a deep learning one, which is the most advanced AI algorithm family. Why deep learning? I will also explain it in this session. Third is scale. And it may sound trivial, but it doesn't. Scale means the ability to always keep the highest accuracy, be fully updated on the enforcement point, to sync globally between different entities, to be designed from day one, knowing you would grow exponentially every year. This is not simple to achieve at all and is essential for the next next gen of threat prevention. The coming slides will show how these three key points are applied in checkpoint threat prevention capabilities. And to better explain the prevention first approach by checkpoint, let's have a look on a sophisticated attack flow and its steps. Initially, as shown in stage one, the attacker will try to find a way into the organization environment by compromising a device, elevates its admin privileges and gain persistency. These steps is likely to be performed remotely. Then in stage two, the compromised host will try to communicate back to the C2 command and control server of the attacker, either by beaconing or by downloading a following payload like Cobalt Strike or any other RAT tool that will help him to move laterally in the network toward the holy grail of the organization, usually a data center server with a highly sensitive information, as shown in stage three. Then in stage four, an additional communication will take place in order to exfiltrate the stolen information to the attacker's remote infrastructure. Given the prevention first approach, let's see how we can prevent the attack from the network side before the initial attack vector in stage one. As we talk in the beginning about providing actual proof points to our threat prevention strategy, I added here a map diagram from the cost of data breach report by Ponom Institution, sponsored by IBM. The report is published annually for 17 years now, covering over 550 organizations worldwide who experience data breaches attacks. The map shows the average cost and frequency of data breaches by the various initial attack vectors or techniques that attackers use. Each technique is represented by a, a, a purple circle on the map. The more right the circle is shown, the more frequent the technique was used. The higher the circle is shown, the more expensive the data breach outcome from this technique was. And it's very simple to see that the most three common techniques are also the one that cost the most. One is phishing, second is stolen or compromised credentials, and third is vulnerability in third party software. Why I'm highlighting it for you? Because these are exactly the three techniques that we strengthen with AI based and deep learning engines in the latest Quantum Titan release, R81.20. The first two, phishing and stolen credentials are usually go together and can be prevented in stage one, the first stage of the attack. The coming two slides will showcase exactly why and how. The third technique is vulnerability in third-party software, 
where in zero-day vulnerabilities, we need to take into consideration that the device is already compromised. But the overall attack can still be prevented in the later stages. Stage two, the initial communication, or stage four, the data exfiltration. I will cover this in the DNS security slides. Let's talk first about phishing and stolen credential techniques. Before talking how we prevent these two techniques, I wanted to showcase how profound the problem of zero-day phishing pages is, again, by providing actual proof points, at this time directly from Threat Cloud. What I did is over a period of 72 hours in December last year, I collected from Threat Cloud hundreds of zero-day phishing pages, examples that were detected and prevented by the new zero phishing engines we added in R81.20. Then I thought it would be nice to turn them into a slide, so I copy and pasted the first 15 pages, and then thought it might, be, it might not be good enough to make a statement. So I copied and pasted, pasted another set of 15 pages. Note that it takes a lot of manual work to create these slides. And then I figured I can stop because I think you get the point, right? Guys, phishing is a problem because users click on everything and because they use their private credentials for business purposes and vice versa, which the attacker can then exploit to get into the corporate environment. Here you can also see why I said that phishing and stolen credentials usually go together because most of the zero-day phishing pages are login pages that trick the users to type in their credentials. How do we prevent the zero-day phishing pages? A checkpoint? In R8120, we added a new security blade called Zero Phishing as part of the SEMDAS license. It's a patented technology of Checkpoint, which is already in production in the Harmony browser extension and Harmony mobile. And now, in line on the gateway, for each, each HTML form that the gateway inspects, we inject a proprietary JavaScript code that scans the form and collect relevant indicators to determine whether the page is legit or a phishing one. Once all indicators are collected, they are processed by the Zero Phishing AI engine in Threat Cloud, and within less than two seconds, the gateway gets a response if to allow the page or to block it. What are the collected indicators in the LinkedIn page example? We check if the URLs matches to the LinkedIn domain, if the credentials are processed in clear text or properly hashed as they should be, even if the canonical URL matches the preview. Overall, 300 indicators and a response in less than two seconds, which is impressive. Oh, and by the way, when we manually copied and pasted these web pages, screenshots, we thought, why not have a tool that allow you uh, to use it yourself, to demo the power of the zero phishing and prevent zero day phishing pages. So we are planning to productize it and make it available in the first half of 2023. The tool with the type name Bionic will include zero day phishing pages, files and emails, and in a click of a button, you will be able to demo them to anyone. What else do we cover in stage one, the entry point? Macros. Macros have existed for quite some time now and are used as first stage to deliver malware. For example, the most common entry vector of the Emotet banking Trojan is a spear phishing email with an attached macro. Now, legacy antiviruses engines are not enough to detect new Emotet variants because there are too many new macro samples every day and it's impossible to catch up with the signature based solutions. What can we do about it? Here is another new patented technology by Checkpoint where we map the macro functions into a nodes graph using proprietary algorithm of Checkpoint and then we run it through a deep learning engine which we train based on millions of legit and malicious macros we already had in Threat Cloud. In this way, where a newly seen macro is received, we can accurately detect if it is malicious or benign. Moreover, for fast delivery of safe documents, we also have threat extraction, as known as CDR, Content Disarm and Reconstruction, which allows to download and review Office documents and PDF files in less than a second. And by the way, Checkpoint Threat Extraction is the only CDR solution for both web downloads and email attachments. It is also the only CDR solution providing a simple flow for the end user to download the original file. Other solutions do not support original downloads at all, or require a, a physical appliance for it. And according to our statistics, in 99% of cases, 
our users do not even download the original file. And CDR is not a feature. It is a necessity and considered by Gartner as one of the best security methods to fight against phishing. Looking at the Gartner hype cycle for network security from late 2021, CDR is positioned very high in the cycle, third to key capabilities such as SASE and firewall as a service. Why it is ranked so high? Because today, this is the most effective method to keep users' productivity high when they need to safely open millions of new documents every day. Let's go back to the attack flow side and the prevention first approach. There are cases like in supply chain attack or a zero day software vulnerability where the device will be compromised and we will need to block the attack in the later stages. Let me show you how from the network side we can detect the command and control communication in stage two and the data exfiltration in stage four in DNS based attacks. In R8120, we added new advanced DNS security blade to the next generation threat prevention package, NGTP. This blade includes two DNS security engines based on deep learning technology. One to protect against DGA technique, domain generation algorithm that is commonly used by attackers in the first communication to the command and control infrastructure. DGA means the domain, that the domain is generated by the infected host and registered by the attacker at the same time thus bypassing traditional domain reputation services because these are newly seen domains. Second engine is for DNS tunneling, where the attacker uses the subdomain to encode and exfiltrate the stolen data. As shown in the right side of the slide, both techniques represent anomalies either in the domains or the subdomains, where threat clouds scan and flag them as malicious in seconds. By the way, the subdomains that are shown on the bottom right side are actual subdomains that were used in the SolarWinds attack to exfiltrate data over a DNS request. With this technology, similar anomalies will be prevented by threat cloud as zero days from now and on. And we already see the true positive results, which I'll show you in a few more slides. More vectors that can be used in stage two, where the attacker communicates with the command and control infrastructure are secondary, secondary payloads such as rats that are dropped to the compromised host. For that, we have another deep learning engine in threat cloud that scans unknown executables and prevent them from entering the network. The deep learning technology allows us to scale and to train the engine on far more samples than a traditional machine learning technology. It also allows us to process the file raw data, bytes, thus not to lose any information in the process. As shown in the slide, overall results of the engines show impressive improvement of 30% higher accuracy and 90% less false positives. Let's have a look at some more actual use cases and proof points of our superior technology and prevention capabilities. Actual example for it can be seen in the slide where an Yves Maria rat was first seen by a quantum gateway in Italy in May last year. Threat Cloud with its 30 plus AI engines detected it as malicious in seconds and of course, the gateway prevented it from running. Then it was synced in seconds to any enforcement point worldwide. And for my data lake, you can see its propagation to dozens of countries within three hours from its first appearance in Italy. And this is just an example of one zero day sample where we see millions of them in threat cloud every day. Another actual proof point is an external report we did with Myrcom a third-party lab who specializes in comparison tests of different security products. The Maricom team downloaded on a period of 24 hours hundreds of newly seen malware from VirusTotal. Then it tested them against Checkpoint and three other competitors. The test results clearly speak for themselves, where Checkpoint achieved 99.7% accuracy in preventing zero-day malware samples, far higher than the rest of the competitors. More proof points, during the summer of last year, we deployed the zero phishing within a few dozens of customers' environment to test it, what we call the early availability program, the EA. Then we waited a couple of months after the initial deployment and reached out to these customers for feedback to understand the value of this new AI-based solution. As the slide shows, over a short period of time, the zero phishing was able to prevent many zero-day threats for our customers. In a bank in Belarus, 
It was the only solution who was able to block an internal phishing site they were keeping solely for competitive testing. In a customer in the US, we prevented a fake login web page of a non-commercial bank. And in Germany, the security admin was amazed to see from the zero phishing dashboard in the smart console how his users are accessing phishing sites which the zero phishing preventing them in real time. And by the way, without getting support tickets back, which means these were true positive detections. Generally speaking, visibility is key for any new threat prevention capability that we release. Therefore, we insist on having a dedicated dashboard for monitoring and showcasing the security value, which is very important for security teams. Last actual proof point slide are statistics based on tens of thousands of zero-day samples we collected from Threat Cloud for the zero phishing and the advanced DNS engines we added in Titan release. Also here, the numbers speak for themselves. When we compared Checkpoint to traditional signature-based solution, like Fish Tank, URL Scan, and others, the zero phishing showed 4x improvement and the advanced DNS engines for DGA and DNS tunneling showed 5x improvement in detection of new attacks. We didn't stop here and tested ourselves against security vendors who claim to have an AI-based technology to detect these threats as well, like Fortinet, Palo Alto, and others. Here we also had a significant edge over them where we detected 40% more zero-day phishing samples and 47% more DNS attacks. I assume that like me, you also think these numbers are very impressive. For the summary of my session, I selected to show two slides that I usually start my session with. First is the extremely busy view of the threat landscape, simply to remind us why we keep adding new security capabilities to our product portfolio to prevent zero-day APTs, supply chain, software vulnerabilities, and ransomware. And finally, to say again that the way we design threat cloud architecture works and is the most effective way today to prevent attack and keep our customers safe. Thank you all for joining my session. I will make sure to answer your questions and also feel free to email me or send me a direct message on any further information you may need. Stay safe and enjoy the rest of the event.